So I have a question regarding promoting and attending events mm-hmm. that are organised by the Kia community. By are we allowed to by attend what, by these? By what, what? Which community you said? By the Shia. By the Shia community. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Again, is this a religious event, a religious celebration, or perhaps it's a wedding, or a graduation ceremony, or one of our colleagues is uh, leaving work or moving? Can you be specific, please, Cheryl? Uh, so, like the Eid celebrations, so they had a festival and um, it was open to the community and it was promoted via um, chat groups and a few of our my friends had attended. Look, Sherry, may Allah bless you and your family. That actually goes back to the fact whether those guys are Muslims or not. And I've answered this question several times before. And I say, any person who testifies to the oneness of Allah and Muhammad is his final messenger and is very keen to observe the fara'id, the pillars of Islam and loves Allah, his messenger and his companions and does not abuse any of them, is a Muslim, alhamdulillah, shukullah. A person who is abusive to the companions of the Prophet and to the mothers of the believers is not a Muslim. And this is something that Allah has referred to in the Quran. So if we know those, those categories of people, they talk ill about Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha and about Hafsa and so on. By no means I'm not going to share with them any festival or religious celebration whatsoever because I do not think they're Muslims. In the West, many people who come from backgrounds predominantly occupied by Shia from Lebanon, from Iraq, from uh, some parts of the world. And when they come to the West and they realize that uh, they have been misinformed. And there are a lot of informations which they were taught wrong. And it is compulsory on us to love, revere, and respect all the mothers of the believers. And to respect Ali and all the Sahaba likewise. Not only Ali and Salman or uh, Abu Dhar, but all the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Love and respect Abu Bakr and Umar. In this case, those people are our brothers and they're Muslims. Okay, so we share with them all the events. I, as a da'iya or as a preacher, I may attend these events if I think my presence has an influence to give them da'wah, to tell them the truth, to show them that without respecting and loving the Messenger of Allah and his wives and his companions, you cannot be Muslim, not just true Muslim, you cannot be Muslim. So my presence is for a reason. It's like exactly when I accept an invitation to go to a synagogue or a church or a university or a hospital to give a, a speech. Fact number two, when I have children and youth and I take them with me to events, who are those people, the Shia? Who are the Shia? They're Muslims like us, uh, Habibi and everything. So why are they different? We say there are no difference. Then he hears them or reads a book in which they curse the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Look, I'm just hinting to one or two things, but not to the major issues like the concept of the Imama and the Khilafah and whether Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was just one of the companions, the revered companions, or he's a prophet, you know, because not all Shia are the same. There are too many different sects and subsects. Some of them, even the mainstream Shia denounce them, like Nusairis, like Alawis, who believe in the Lordship of Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu an. So if I don't know much, I should consult my local Imam. And I ask him, what do you think of those people? Shall we hang around with them? You know better, because the Imam would know first hand. Thank 